And now, based on those two um, ratings, likelihood and impact, we, we calculate a, an aggregate measure of risk by multiplying those two things together. So 4 times 3 is 12. And I'm calling that the risk priority number, RPN, which is an acronym that you'll see me using as, uh, as I go along here. Um, and so the RPN, uh, risk priority number, is, as I said, the aggregate level of risk or aggregate metric of risk for the risk item. And that's going to drive uh, sequencing of the tests that uh, relate to that risk item. And it's going to drive triage of tests, if necessary, um, that are related to that risk item. And it's also going to be used to determine the extent of testing through a mechanism that I'm going to show you a little bit later. Now, um, take a look at this guy here, 1.005, new commands do not function. Now you see here we get TBD, TBD, and of course the pound sign here where the calculation didn't work because it tried to calculate multiplying two strings together. TBD meaning to be determined. As we got a note to Jim here. Jim, Jim Casty, the test manager in charge of this, uh, might need to break this out for each new command. So Jim's got an action item to go off and think about this and see if it needs to be broken out. And if it does, then we're going to have different likelihood and impact ratings for each one of those. So that's, um, that's how this works. Now you can see down here at the bottom, we see we've got a place to capture the project risk, the byproducts that we uh, identified. So that's that's in the template. Um, and then miscellaneous, any other issues that come up, we captured there. And then the uh, risk levels and the extent of testing are defined in this worksheet. So that the, what, what a very high impact versus a high impact versus a medium impact versus a low impact versus a very low impact means it's find in there. And then the mapping from the RPN to the, the extent of testing is also defined in that other worksheet. So this is pretty much a comprehensive collection of the information. So that's where we are um, at the, uh, the end of the session. Now, once Jim finished getting the ratings done, um, the risk priority number, or RPN, is now calculated for each item based on that formula. And as I said, the likelihood and impact are rated on a five-point scale. So we've got risk priority numbers ranging from 1 to 25. And because I used a descending scale, where the larger numbers are the smaller risk, then for the risk priority number, um, 1 is the most risky. It's uh, very likely to, to happen. Uh, and um, when it happens, it's going to be very bad, um, basically. And 25 is the least risky. It's very unlikely. And even if it did happen, uh, odds are real good. Nobody would care. Now, obviously, since so much is, is dependent on these ratings being right, the sequencing of the tests, the allocation of effort, the, um, the uh, triage of the tests, if need be, the reporting of the results, we need to make sure that these um, assessments are correct. So we need to, to look at these assessments and make sure they are correct. And one of the things that can go wrong, frequently does go wrong to some extent, it's not a big deal, but it's a, it's a problem that needs to be identified and solved, is clumping of the risk ratings. So basically clumping is when you have a lot of the risk items having uh, a single risk rating, particularly one that's kind of shoved to one side or the other of the distribution. Now, that can occur for a number of reasons. Um, there are a couple that are, are particularly common. One is the skewing of the impact. So when they, the people involved in doing the risk um, assessment, uh, when they look at the risk items, say, oh, oh, you know, this is something really horrible could happen if that happened. And so, you know, this, it's a very high impact. And then pretty quick, everything starts being a very high impact. Uh, a lot of times that's happening because people are basing their ratings on, on worst case possible outcomes. You want to remember when you're rating the impact to think about what's the most likely um, um, typical kind of, of production problem, field failure we get related to this um, risk item. So, you know, for example, if we're talking about system, um, system response too slowly to user input, don't think about the most catastrophic performance problem you could possibly have. 
and think about well, when we have that kind of system response time problem, what does that usually mean? So that could, that's skewing. Skewing can happen. Another thing that can happen is that the, just the, the, the distinctions on the scale of likelihood ratings or impact ratings are not well defined or not well internalized. So we want to check to see if that's happened. And it's very easy to do when you've captured these risk items and their ratings in a spreadsheet because you can create a histogram like this guy here. And basically what we have in this histogram is um, with the number of uh, risk items uh, associated with each rating. So we have, looks like about two risk items that had a, a risk priority number of one. And it looks like we've got six that had a risk priority number of 15, and we've got four that had a risk priority number of 16, and so forth. So we can see here that there's a bunch of risk, one bunch of risks that have a risk priority number of six. Um, and that's kind of a problem because what you really want in this distribution is something, excuse me, you want something that is um, normal-ish. Now, I say normal-ish because you're never going to get this precisely normal. Um, uh, by normal, I'm, I'm referring to a bell curve or normal curve or Gaussian distribution, whatever name you learned for this in college, but it's the bell curve. Um, and you want you want to have your histogram look more or less normal. Now, don't don't get too bogged down in the details of, oh, it's not perfectly normal, so I've got to go tweak some values and tweak some values. No, that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is um, if you see gross deviations from a normal distribution, as we see here, then it's probably a good idea to, um, not probably a good idea, it is a good idea to go through and try to figure out why the clumping is happening. So here we've seen we've seen clumping and, and specifically a form of skewing. That's the the uh, ratings are, are skewed to the more um, uh, risky side of the scale, which is, is a concern. Now what we do when you when you see that is that you look at the number of risk items uh, that have particular likelihood ratings and the number of risk items that have particular impact ratings, and you want to try to identify where where the skewing comes from and where the problem is. Now, at first, if you look at the left-hand side here, which shows the number of risk items at this particular likelihood counts, that, that almost looks like there's a problem here, particularly you get it down here and you get here, you go, wow, you know, it really does seem to be pretty heavily uh, skewed towards the, the less risky end of the scale. Um, but this is a, a mature, well-established uh, product. It's got a uh, maintainable solid code base, for experienced developers. So this is actually the likelihood distribution that you would expect uh, for a product like this. Where the, where the problem comes in is in the uh, right table. You notice that uh, fully half of the impact ratings are right here at two, impact of two, or in other words, high impact. Um, and th that's that's problematic under any case. Now, it's possible that there's something fundamental about the application that tends to skew the impacts towards the higher end of the scale, too. But the, the bigger issue is, if that were the case, you'd expect that you see the, the kind of distribution that we see over on the likelihood side. But uh, certainly, you don't want all 50% you know, of the risk items to have the same impact rating. That's, that's, a, that's a clumping issue where you, you have a problem with this distinguishing between the impact ratings, in this case, of, of two and, and three. So we, uh, we fixed that. We, we changed the definitions of what, the, um, what the, the ratings were for two and three, what that implied from an impact point of view. And you can see these precise definitions and the changes we made in the, in the article, as I said, that's on the, on the website, uh, the risk-based testing article. Um, but this is now the adjusted risk priority number histogram based on that reevaluation, um, and as you can see, this is closer to a to a normal curve. So it was a it was a pretty simple problem to fix. Just change the definitions, go through and look at some of the twos and see if they would actually fall into the three categories, and reconfirm with the stakeholders that those changes were okay, and. Um, that turned out to to solve the problem, and here you can see 
uh, I just had a transition there. Uh, you should caught that showed that changing 